join me in singing the national anthem, please? It's a privilege to introduce to you Captain Steve Greenway of the Air Force. He's stationed in San Antonio and he just happens to be our grandson. And it's a joy to welcome you, Steve. He's going to share our proclamation this morning. The United States truly is an exceptional nation. When considering the reason for our prominence, power, and prosperity, I believe it is primarily a result of the way our nation began. America was founded as a Christian nation. It began with the premise that Almighty God was the author of life, and he set forth laws and principles by which mankind could thrive and prosper. Thomas Jefferson wrote it like this, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Since its beginning, the citizens of this country have had the opportunity to enjoy what few in life will ever experience, true freedom, personal liberty, the opportunity to, ach to achieve, to better oneself, and to succeed. Tolerance for others' beliefs and religions was, and still is, a core belief of this Christian nation. It truly sets us apart from most of the known world. But it is obvious to anyone paying attention that America is in trouble. It will take a miracle to reset this nation and put it back once again on an upward path. I fear we as Christians have fallen into believing our hope is in a political party or a specific leader. But God is neither Republican nor Democrat nor independent. God is the holy and sovereign ruler of all there is. We must sound a clarion call for the need to return to God and the need for a life-changing revival in our land. May we be reminded of God's promise in 2 Chronicles 7.14. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. A challenge to believers to do all they can to make a difference in their homes, their churches, their cities, and in this great country.
what I tell everyone. I was born by God's dear grace in an extraordinary place where the stars and stripes and the eagle flies. Well, it's a big old land with countless dreams. And happiness isn't out of reach. Hard work pays off the way it should. Yeah, I've seen enough to know that we've got it good. Where the stars and stripes and the eagle Oh, 
I believe the gospel of Jesus Christ prescribes the wisest rules for just conduct for every situation in life. Francis Hopkinson, another signer, was one of the first federal judges appointed by George Washington. He was a church music director and a church organist and wrote America's first purely American hymnal. John Witherspoon, Princeton of, of, president of Princeton University, signer of the Declaration of Independence, said, I entreat you in the most earnest manner to believe in Jesus Christ, for there is no salvation in any other. If you're not reconciled to God through Jesus, if you're not covered by his spotless robe of redemption, you must forever perish. These are the founders of this nation. Patrick Henry, the man who cried, give me liberty or give me death, said, It cannot be stated too strongly or too often that this great nation was founded not by religionists, but by Christians, and not on religion, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ. These great patriots and many more like them were statesmen, men of character and integrity. They possessed a great faith in God and adhered to biblical principles for the betterment of all mankind. They affixed their names to the Declaration of Independence, which is the foundational document of our government. From this great foundation, they constructed the Constitution of the United States. These documents were the beginnings for what would produce one of the greatest nations in all of history. But our greatness is not because of our might or our intellect. America is exceptional because we adopted certain principles from our beginning that God was able to bless. Our second president, John Adams, said, the general principles on which the fathers achieved independence were the general principles of Christianity. Our seventh president, Andrew Jackson, said, The Bible is the rock on which our republic rests. Did you know that the first Bible printed in the English language in America was printed with United States congressional approval? It happened in 1782. In the record it states the Holy Scriptures were printed for the use of our schools. For 320 years, the Bible was part of our public education. It's been only the last 50 years that the courts decided to remove the Bible from our public schools. Abraham Lincoln said, The philosophy of the schoolroom in one generation will be the philosophy of the government in the next. Somewhere along the way, we left the God of our fathers. Instead of following the biblical path of our founders, we trusted in our own wisdom, replacing the perfect, unchanging laws of God with the laws of our own making. We now as a nation find ourselves morally bankrupt, financially ruined, and full of corruption. I wonder if we realize how dangerously close we are to losing the America that we love. Abraham Lincoln prophetically warned, America will not be destroyed from the outside. If we falter and lose our freedoms, it will be because we destroyed ourselves. But, but there's a remnant of believers across this nation who still believe that God can rescue and God can still save, and that righteousness exalts a nation, and sin is a reproach to any people. We can no longer sit around and complain about our political leaders. We must rise up and sound the alarm. From the church house to the White House, it's time to cry out to God on behalf of our nation, to ask Him to forgive us and to cleanse us to heal our land. God can heal the soul of our nation. He can still change the hearts of men and women. It's with mercy and love He calls out to us. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my place, and turn from their wicked ways, 
Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land.
majority of those responsible for the birth of this nation knew that Jesus Christ, living in a person, in a city, in a nation, is what truly gives life, liberty, purpose, and freedom. church setting is pretty easy for us to clap songs like the Patriots patriotism and these great songs of what we believe and it's still the cross you know I found out in the last couple of days if you talk about the cross and you talk about standing on the truth of God's Word some people don't like that they're offended But beloved, if we're ever going to make a difference in our nation, we must stand upon the truth of God's Word. And I say that without any apology. God's Word is the foundation 
on which our lives are based and, are, and governed. It's easy for us in a group of people like this to talk about, we believe, we believe, we believe. Yeah, I, I believe what everybody else believes. This morning I want to draw it down as we close to something a little bit more personal. What do you believe about the Jesus on the cross? What do you believe? Because it's when we begin to make that choice and those decisions based upon what Jesus did on the cross, dying for our sins, then as we begin to live a life that reflects Jesus, that's when we begin to see our nation and our country change. It's not easy. It's hard. The song that we just sang, the choir just sang, talks about we live in a time of watered-down theology. Just trying to say things to make people happy, to appease everyone. At some point in time, we as believers, as Christ followers, must be willing to say, this is what I believe. Brother Ron's going to lead us in a song. This morning it's a song of commitment. And I hope you can sing it. Maybe not everyone in this room will be able to sing this song from the deep recesses of your heart. But I believe if we would capture the very essence of what the message of this song is, we'll see some things change in our country. The hymn is number 318 in your hymn books. We invite you to turn to that. And we're going to sing about, about the cross of Jesus. We're going to sing, it's not about what we believe, but I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. I believe that Jesus Christ died not only for my sins, but for the sins of the nations and of the world. And as we turn and give our lives to Him, He will hear our prayer, He will hear our cry, and God can begin to heal our land. Will you stand with us? Will you sing with us as Brother Ron leads this song? There are
let me leave you with this word, just as a word of warning. You just saying that you believe in that hill called Mount Calvary, and you said, whatever it may cost me, there may be a price to be paid in our nation today in standing up for what you believe. I'm glad that I live in a nation that I can stand up for what I believe. Amen? Amen. Thank you for all of you who have served our nation, protected and protects our freedom even today. Thank you so much. I'm going to ask our distinguished signers of Declaration of Independence and former presidents to exit now, and they're going to be at the doors to... Um, to greet you as you leave the place today. So guys, go ahead and get into place. And Pastor, I just want to interject that there will be a video available. If you'd like to secure a video, just call the church office and we'll reserve a video for you. It'll be a few weeks before we have them done. Thank you. We want to give these guys and gals a hand for sharing with us today. We're grateful for Don and John up in the skybox seats running the sound in the video and Ken for helping video today as well too. Thank you. you. Will you bow with me as we close in prayer today? Our Father, we thank you for this great nation we live in. We thank you for the freedom we have to express our religious freedom. And Father, for the freedom we find in Christ, Words simply fail us. We're so grateful for your love and your mercy and your compassion. May we leave this place and live out our Christian faith in our community, in our area, in our state, in our land, so that others can see Jesus in us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you for being here today.